Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather on the now 19th day of March 2021 as the year continues to slide by. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show. Up first, uh, hazardous weather graphic, I believe here. Let's see, there we go. I gotta get the cursor in the right spot. There we are. Uh, let's see, that's a winter weather advisory for the Bristol Bay area and that the Bristol Bay area specifically west of Dillingham. And that's out currently, is currently out and will remain out uh, until 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Looking for a snowfall of 48 inches, again, west of Dillingham. Uh, so that includes Togiak, Togiak Bay area and that's uh, by 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon with winds gusting 35 miles an hour. Look for visibilities down to a half mile at times in blowing snow. And from there, that's it. Well, actually, that's it for the watches, warnings, or advisories around the state. Uh, everywhere else, uh, pretty clear or uh, warning free, watch free. And on the satellite imagery, you can see the storm system out there in the Bering Sea, kind of the northern Bering there or west southwest of St. Lawrence, St. Matthew Island and the front pushing the clouds in toward the coast. Also pretty gusty winds, more of a uh, wind producer than precipitation producer. Uh, precipitation amounts in the warmer southerly flow, Alaska Peninsula seen mostly in the form of uh, rain. Uh, Port Hyden had, I believe, uh, snow and uh, then it changed to rain down toward Cold Bay Falls Pass or about four tenths of an inch fell in the last 12 hours at Falls Pass, about a tenth of an inch at Cold Bay. Winds on the peninsula gusting uh, anywhere from 40 to 50, maybe 55 miles an hour in gusts, but even stronger gusts along the southwest coast. Cape Newenham seeing uh, winds out of the east gusting to 65 miles an hour this afternoon. Of course, that's one of the windier locations out on the coastline, not the windiest there for, the, for that portion. And then up Tuxuk Bay, lighter winds, I believe, gusting 40 to 45 miles an hour farther up the coastline there. And then even lighter winds north of there, away from the low center. And uh, otherwise, uh, again, about, uh, let's see, 10 or 15 hundredths of an inch of uh, precipitation, water equivalent falling in the Pribilof, St. George Island. And then that's about it with just uh, very light uh, precipitation amounts reaching the southwest coast this afternoon. Uh, of course, snow is pretty hard to measure in the gusty winds. Otherwise, uh, low pressure tracking eastward, trough moving across the panhandle there with the main band of clouds now east of the area. Uh, down from about Dixon entrance into Canada and snow showers, rain and snow showers, or rain showers or just snow showers depending on your elevation and the time of day there, as well as your latitude proximity to the ocean. Uh, falling, but again, the mount's not all that heavy. Winds a little on the gusty side, Sitka seeing 35 mile an hour wind gusts and precipitation amounts in the last 12 hours. Water equivalent precipitation amounts range from one to four tenths of an inch with some areas uh, not seeing any at all. And they range from say a hundredth of an inch at Heidelberg to about four tenths of an inch at Shoulder Cove and Davies Creek farther to the north there. Uh, well, actually much farther to the north. I believe that's even north of Juneau. And uh, that'll continue to uh, slowly diminish uh, throughout the night tonight. The watches and warnings they had out or the advisories and wa warnings they had earlier today have ended uh, some time ago around midday, I believe. And clearing skies uh, back to the west, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, South Central Alaska, clear mid and high level clouds now spreading over Kodiak Island and Northeast Bristol Bay and coming inland there over the Southwest interior, but uh, mostly clear or variably cloudy. Some uh, areas of uh, clouds there to the north. Fairbanks was kind of cloudy this morning with light snow and flurries going on there, but since cleared out this afternoon. And then some variable clouds you can see up over the Arctic coast uh, kind of uh, circulating around that big upper level high that's north of uh, Point Barrow there. And so that's coming in from the northeast on the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast and kind of swings around and goes from uh, southeast to northwest there off the northwest or the western coast. Otherwise at the surface high pressure and over the area there for light winds, dry conditions, no problems up that way at all. And about the same for the interior, mostly clear, some areas of clouds, but pretty clear all the way down to the Gulf of Alaska, Kenai Peninsula. As I mentioned, high mid-level clouds now from that storm system spreading in over Kodiak Island and into the southwest interior with some light snow showing up. Uh, Nunavak Island and along the southwest coast into almost Togiak Bay 
and then the warmer conditions there with the southerly flow and the warm front, uh, precipitation falling in the form of rain this afternoon for the Alaska Peninsula, showers, eastern Aleutians, central Aleutians, trough swinging around the bottom of that low uh, with uh, showers for Adak and Atka, and a little colder temperatures again coming southward there on the back side of that system, uh, again lowering snowfall levels over the western Aleutians. And for the forecast for tonight, uh, again, diminishing snow showers there for the southeast coast, uh, actually becoming dry for the Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area, dry for the North Gulf Coast with a few clouds, increasing clouds, uh, south central Alaska with chance of snow moves into the southern Kenai Peninsula, Kachemak and Kamishak Bay areas, same thing for Kodiak Island, snow uh, changing to a mixed rain or snow condition as the night wears on with that southeast wind. And uh, snow, though, periods of with, uh, again, 48 inches possible by 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon for the Bristol Bay west of Dillingham area. Otherwise, snowfall will be lighter up into the, toward the Cuscombe, Yukon Delta there. Cuts off right along the Yukon River and uh, staying fair. But a little bit more breezy conditions there for the area from the uh, Yukon Delta coast, St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula into the western interior. Could see gusts maybe 25 miles an hour for some of the higher elevation areas, but light winds, dry conditions all the way up to the Arctic coast, maybe some patchy fog up there just off the coastline. And the rain and snow showers over the eastern Aleutians will change to snow showers out west of Adak and then dry out for Shimian Atu. And then moving on to uh, tomorrow, first day of the weekend, we've got uh, rain and snow for the Panhandle front beginning to increase that late tomorrow afternoon along the south coast there. And then periods of uh, light snow, best chance, North Gulf Coast, uh, Kenai Peninsula, and especially down towards Southern Cook Inlet. Uh, Kodiak Island, kind of a mixed precipitation pattern there, but nothing too terribly heavy. Uh, and Bristol Bay, again, uh, snow tapering off in the afternoon there. And chances of snow continue up to about the Yukon River and may pick up enough wind for some blowing snow. St. Lawrence Island, maybe the Bering Strait. And uh, mostly snow showers with lower snowfall levels there coming around the, uh, in the westerly flow, pushing into the Fox Islands, but drying out uh, for the most part, losing the precipitation, Adak and Atka out towards Chimney and Atu. Dry and mostly clear, central interior all the way to the Arctic coast, maybe a few clouds up over the North Slope. Outlook for Sunday. Again, uh, another system pushing in toward the panhandle there for uh, wind and rain. Uh, or snow, depending again on your elevation, the time of day and your latitude, or longitude actually as well, with a chance of light snow pushing into uh, the eastern portion of the Copper River Basin. Mostly clear though, western Copper River Basin, Manuska, Susitna Valley, seeing an increase in clouds in the afternoon in those locations, increasing clouds throughout the day for Cook Inlet, and then periods of uh, snow for the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, up into the central and uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley, Kuskokwim Mountains, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, periods of light snow, that becomes even lighter for St. Lawrence Island and the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula. As, uh, the northern half of the state, uh, fair and dry with a uh, fair amount of sunshine. Snow showers pretty numerous out there over the Bering Sea and uh, possibly the Fox Islands, some scattered snow showers as well as Adak and Atka. Looking at the lows tonight, upper teens, northern panel, upper 20s down to the south. Uh, approaching 20 below zero in the Copper River Basin there and below zero again into the Susitna Valley and uh, possibly even the Kenai Peninsula, five below to five above for the lows tonight and upper teens, Kachemak Bay, 15 to 20, Bristol Bay, mid 20s, Kodiak Island, mid 30s, Alaska Peninsula and below zero temperatures north of the Alaska range, 10 to 20 below to maybe 30 to 35 below for the Yukon Flats North Slope and near zero St. Lawrence Island and the Yukon Delta Coast, mid teens for the Bethel area, lower to mid 30s for the Aleutians and the Bering Sea. And then the highs tomorrow, upper 30s, Kodiak Island, 20 to 25 for uh, South Central Alaska, near 30 down toward Homer and Seward for the highs, mid-teens, Copper River Basin, 24 for Valdez, and uh, 30s for the Panhandle, upper 20s, lower 30s for Bristol Bay, and the Tana Valley, Central Interior, all in the teens, single numbers of the Brooks Range, staying below zero north coast and Arctic coast, or North Slope and Arctic Coast, single numbers for Kotzebue Sound, mid-teens for Nome and the Yukon Delta, mid-30s for the Pribilofs, otherwise uh, 30s for the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. Lows following morning, uh, 28 to 36 for the Panhandle, again below zero Copper River Basin, five below to 15 above South Central Alaska, below zero north of the Alaska Range of the Arctic Coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
First line weather graphic for Saturday morning. Marginal VFR, central north slope, and the uh, central and east central Arctic coast. And uh, a couple patches of IFR there from near Kotzebue out to the west and over the Yukon Flats there along the Yukon River. And uh, otherwise, it's VFR uh, for the remainder of the interior all the way down to the uh, central panhandle. Increasing marginal VFR coming up the east side of the Kenai Peninsula into uh, western, into Passage Canal possibly late tonight, uh, and IFR spreading over Kodiak Island and into Bristol, Togiak Bay, Dillingham, into uh, possibly the uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley, more likely marginal VFR there, uh, may reach Sleep Mute. Yukon, lower Yukon River Valley in the Delta stays VFR, Northern Bering Sea, Seward Peninsula VFR. But IFR over the central and southeastern Bering Sea, Nunavak Island into uh, Kuskokwim Bay, Pribilofs, and the Fox Islands, Adak and Athka. For the afternoon, shaping up like this, uh, that area kind of breaks up there. Uh, IFR there, uh, west of the Pribilofs and well north of the Aleutians. So you can see VFR from Shimi and Attu all the way up to the Alaska Peninsula. Nelson Lagoon pick up marginal VFR that turns into IFR, say from Pilot Point up into uh, you get King Salmon over toward get, uh, Dillingham, and that extends northward along and just west of the uh, Alaska Range there. And then VFR, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, with lower conditions along the coast, IFR Nunavak Island, pretty good, northern Bering Sea, as well as the uh, uh, Bering Strait, uh, just a narrow band of uh, marginal VFR there, just grazing, say, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, maybe Shishmaref, and of course, uh, Tin City, and the eastern uh, Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, westward to possibly uh, Wainwright, otherwise VFR in the interior, but IFR on the increase, uh, eastern slopes of the western Alaska range, and uh, pushing a little bit better up into Prince William Sound, and in toward the pan, it becomes marginal VFR across the entire southeast coast. And that area IFR slips on in, but it has trouble holding together when it gets inland there over the southeast coast for Sunday morning. Marginal VFR otherwise, and North Gulf Coast and much of the interior looking good. VFR, marginal VFR, North Slope Arctic Coast, north side of the Seward Peninsula, and uh, IFR just south of St. Lawrence Island and just off the Yukon Delta Coast. Marginal VFR, central southeast Bering Sea, IFR uh, locked up there, northeast Bristol Bay, and on the uh, west side of the Aleutian Range and the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, but stays VFR for the Aleutians. And that uh, holds pretty much into Sunday afternoon. Start getting grazed with some marginal VFR for uh, Atka and the north side of the Fox Islands, a band of IFR along the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, right on up into the King Salmon area in Dillingham, western Iliamna Lake there. Uh, but VFR, Cook Inlet, north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, uh, lower conditions over much of the Panhandle. And uh, Yakutat VFR, marginal VFR, central eastern Arctic coast, some IFR possible now, eastern St. Lawrence Island, and staying really good out west. Uh, for the passes, Anatovic VFR, same forecast for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, deteriorating conditions tomorrow uh, with lowest uh, possible IFR in the eastern approach of both passes. And rainy, just becoming marginal possibly uh, throughout the afternoon hours. Windy stays VFR, as does Isabel, Mentasta. And Tanita, possible marginal VFR, that'd be mostly on the eastern entrance uh, for tomorrow afternoon toward evening. And Portage, marginal VFR trending toward IFR, especially on that eastern approach. And Chilkoot and White, VFR becomes marginal. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet just south of Kodiak Island, otherwise at the surface there, north of the Pribilofs, uh, hugging, or just catching, uh, say, Kachemak Bay, south of the North Gulf Coast, and along the coast of the Panhandle of Lysing. Uh, maybe a small zone of uh, considerable moderate rime icing, possibly moving into Prince of Wales Island there, and also around northern Kodiak, Fognac Island. Otherwise, uh, lighter icing threats uh, over the remainder of the southeast coast and across the Kenai Peninsula to Nunavak Island. Jet stream, uh, upper level low tracking eastward, a little faster than the one trough exiting the eastern interior, but that crossing Kodiak Island, 65 knot winds in toward the central panhandle. Northwest, 65 picks up to 75 knots over the Fox Islands, 9,000 feet. Northwest, 40 knots along the Aleutians. And uh, 35 knots into the panhandle. Light winds elsewhere, 3,000 feet. Uh, 50 to 55 knot winds at this elevation here. North Gulf Coast crossed uh, the Barren Islands and 45 off the southeast coast. 40 uh, eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence, moderate chop, panhandle. Prince William Sound, Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, St. Lawrence Island.
Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. What is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. 
Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. And now, marine weather around Alaska. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan with the marine weather segment of our show. And the sea ice edge today uh, is extending across uh, the north central Bering Sea into the southwest. And we are expecting uh, northeast and more northerly winds uh, in the next couple of days. That'll help to push the ice a little farther west uh, over the next few days. Also, with colder temperatures returning, that will allow frazzle ice to form along the ice's edge. Well, across southeast Alaska on Saturday, uh, we are looking at southeast winds, the inner waterways at 20 to 25 knots, waves generally four to five feet from Skagway, Juneau, down toward Ketchikan. Uh, east to southeast winds to 30 knots with eight to 10 foot waves for the open waters uh, of the Gulf. And then on Sunday, uh, Winds will be north to northwest there across the, the northern half of the inner waterways uh, at around 15 to 20 knots, waves three or four feet, but turning more westerly along the coast at 20 to 25 knots and waves generally between 10 and 15 feet. On Saturday for uh, south central areas, Prince William Sound will see northeasterly winds at 20 knots, four foot waves, but notice how much the winds are picking up east to northeast winds uh, south of the Kenai and north of uh, Kodiak Island and at the mouth of Cook Inlet. 40 knot gale force winds with waves 13 to 17 feet. As low pressure passes, winds will turn more to the north and then northwest. So that uh, northerly winds 20 knots at Prince William Sound, waves three feet there on uh, Sunday. Northwest winds off the Kenai and northeast of Kodiak uh, will keep waves upwards around eight to near 10 feet. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, uh, again on Saturday we are seeing northeast winds as low pressure will be passing nearby and just uh, off to the east. But ahead of the low, uh, winds will be south to southwest, shifting to the west uh, out through the uh, end of the uh, Alaska Peninsula at around 25 to 30 knots with wa waves running 8 to 9 feet on the Bering side, but uh, 10 to 15 feet once you get offshore there on the Pacific into the Gulf side. And for Sunday, uh, look for winds to turn more to the, the west at around 15 to 20 knots. Waves are running around 10 to 12 feet on the Pacific side and around 5 to 7 feet from Port Hyden south to Cold Bay. The Aleutian chain winds will generally be out of the west on Saturday at 25 to 30 knots. Waves uh, on the uh, Pacific side running 12 to 15 feet on the uh, Aleutian side. Waves will generally be running around or just over 10 feet. And on Sunday, winds will turn more to the northwest and especially north on the west end of the chain at around 20 knots and waves on the Pacific side generally running 8 to 10 feet and on the Bering side around 8 or 9 feet. For the west coast, Saturday we'll see brisk uh, northeast winds set up at around 25 knots. That's going to help to push that ice a little more toward the west here during the course of the weekend. Uh, open waters, westerly 15 knot winds at St. Paul and St. George, creating six foot waves. And then on Sunday, uh, winds will be turning more to the northwest south of uh, St. Matthew, 
as well as at St. Paul and St. George at around 20 knots with waves of six feet. Over the ice areas, look for winds to be have either a north or an easterly component coming uh, offshore there at around 15 to 20 knots. For the Arctic coast on Saturday, winds will be out of the east at around 10 knots. And then for areas uh, of the northwest coast uh, from uh, Cape Lisbon South through uh, Kotzebue uh, Sound and Norton Sounds, winds will be out of the northeast 15 to as high as 20 knots. And on Sunday, uh, the winds along the west northwest coast there will uh, still be offshore uh, east to northeast at around 15 knots, whereas they'll be a bit stronger along the Arctic coast, especially from Prudhoe Bay eastward at around 25 knots with some blowing snow possible. So on the surface weather map, we have low pressure tonight that will be uh, moving uh, toward uh, southwest Alaska coming on shore with a secondary low out over the central Bering Sea. The low will cross Kodiak Island on Saturday. This is going to produce accumulating snows, winter weather advisories for the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, occluded front will work its way eastward toward the southeast coast as low pressure lags back through the west and out over the Bering. Finally, on Sunday, look for that low to uh, be moving onshore and weakening as it comes into southeast Alaska with troughiness, wet conditions there, snow in the mountains and inland areas. And back to the west, trough. Troughiness and light snow lingers across uh, much of the West as we go into the day on Sunday. So thank you for watching our show and have a great weekend. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank <laughs> you.